to Seymour's World on ThinkTech Hawaii. You can find all my commentaries and Seymour's World episodes on the ThinkTech Hawaii website. I welcome your comments by email, text, or phone. You can also reach me at seymour.kazimerski at gmail.com or 808-551-3222. As this is our last show of the year, I have to thank Jay, Carol, Zuri, Nick, Ian, and all the other staff here at ThinkTech Hawaii for making Seymour's World possible. I also need to thank my family, especially Sue, who is not only the best wife in the world, but also my editor, who takes complete credit for all the good shows and no credit for the bad ones. I have to thank my children, Aaron and Alana, who put up with my crazy lifestyle all year. And of course, I must thank my musicians and performers who volunteer tirelessly for our Make Em Smile program at the hospitals. And to all of you in our audience, thank you for watching. It is amazing, but Seymour's World is now viewed in 27 countries around the world. And the comments I get from so many of you need some recognition as well. I especially need to thank the young people, like 94-year young Jeanette in England, 89-year-old Fanny in Calgary, who tells it like it is. And her comments range from Seymour, that was an excellent show, or that was the worst show I have ever seen. And there's 89-year-old Phil Whitney, who always redistributes my shows to his own personal mailing list. Chris in Japan, Sherry, Nier, and Peter in Hong Kong, Hubert in Bangkok, Mark and Dan in Chiang Mai, Ernst in Austria, Kitty in Montreal, Catherine in Vancouver, Felipe in Argentina, Eduardo in Peru, Peter in Capestown, Alex in Australia, Lior and Avila in Israel, and so on and on and on. I especially want to thank seven-year-old Christina, who said her dad makes her watch my show every single time. I can't thank everyone, but you know who you are. Okay, so today's commentary is focus on what's good, not what's wrong. As 2016 comes to a close and 2017 is upon us, I want to share the insight and experience I've gained as I've tried to embrace an attitude of celebration in my life. You know the press is focused on 90% negative news, and as most of us only watch, read, or listen to sound bites, we tend to develop a negative attitude. Yet, when we see a good story of a soldier being reunited with his daughter, we all smile, we cry, and we feel compassion for the goodness that becomes part of our life. Both personally and professionally, I hope that we recognize and celebrate what's good, not what's wrong, leading us to happier, more productive lives. Celebrating what's good enables us to recognize the options and opportunities before us while helping to unleash our energy and our creativities. That's true, where, whether we are trying to come up with an innovative way to promote our company's product, figure out how to better coach our kids' soccer team, or as in my work, help kids see the light at the end of the tunnel. Although it may appear paradoxical, celebrating what's good also allows us to harness the energy we need to fix what's wrong with the world or at least our corners of it. Celebrating what's good with the world does not mean pretending there aren't things that are wrong. Without a doubt, many situations desperately need improvement. However, we are more prepared to tackle these tasks when we can also keep in mind the many things that are good with the world. When we recognize the good, we're implicitly acknowledging that solutions exist for many of the challenges before us. However, Making a conscious effort to celebrate what's good can help all of us become more effective at whatever it is we're doing with our lives, as employees and managers, as friends and family members, and as members of our communities. We can enjoy professional and personal lives that are more passionate, creative, and rewarding. Even when others support us, life itself throws us challenges. Time and money are often in short supply. We may have to contend with health problems. Friends and colleagues may disagree with our plans. However, when we wholeheartedly commit to a goal, 
we can ultimately find it. We find it not because some higher being has magically reorganized the world to fit our wishes, but because we're more likely to strive for the results we desire, even in the face of naysayers and obstacles. So my friends, whether you are going to make resolutions or not for 2617, remember, focus on what's good, not what's wrong. And I promise you a contentment that is a lot better than worrying about things you cannot change. For me, I have a lot to look forward to. I have a, grand, a new granddaughter, Isabella, thanks to Ashley, my daughter-in-law, who I am sure will allow me to spoil her. I want to continue to fight my cancer. I want to play tennis thinking I am 40 and golf like I could be just like Rory McIlroy one day. I want to continue my work at Make Him Smile and help all of our foster kids and kids hurt too. I want to continue to lecture at schools and universities on the Holocaust and mentor as many young entrepreneurs who need help in their careers. My consulting business continues to feed our family and thank heaven we are all healthy. For you, I hope you decide to do whatever suits you for 2017, whether it's taking it easy or living outside of your comfort zone. If you can, try something new. Get some new friends. Try a new activity. It's really exhilarating. It's exciting. And it will keep you smiling. I think next year we're going to start 2017 with an episode called I Love You Just the Way You Are. I hope you look forward to it. I wish you all a happy and peaceful new year, filled with a confidence that you could do anything you want as long as you will do whatever it takes to make it happen. My name is Seymour Kazimersky. You are watching a commentary of Seymour's World. You can find all my commentaries and Seymour's World episodes on the Think Tech Hawaii website. I welcome your comments by email, text, or phone. Thank you again for a wonderful 2016. Aloha.